All right, guys, it is that time again. We are ready to take a science test in a few days. So as you are watching this review video, it will go over the uh, vocabulary words and examples of the things you should have learned about this unit. And be sure to follow along and listen for what you need to do to earn some extra points in class. So our first word is conduction. So conduction is when we transfer heat through direct contact. We have to touch it to transfer that heat. Now remember, it always goes from the hotter to the colder. So once that hot one, right, it's giving its energy away and getting colder, and that hot one's, the cold one's getting the energy until they balance and they reach that thermal equilibrium. So conduction, you have to actually touch it. So here are some examples, right? We touch the table to transfer our hand heat to the table. When I straighten my hair, I have to put that flat iron right on my hair and touch my hair. I mean, I wish I could just like wave it over and it would magically work, but it has to touch my hair. This kid eating pizza, right? It's really hot. That pizza is touching his mouth. So if I just look at the pizza, it doesn't, doesn't burn my tongue until I touch it. Okay, this blanket has to touch me to warm me up. The iron has to touch my clothes to get out the wrinkles. This food has to touch the pan, which is touching the heat source. So all of these have to touch in order for that heat to be able to transfer from the hotter object to the colder object. Okay, our next type of heat transfer is convection. So convection is that cycling of fluids. Fluids are gases and liquids. So those molecules, right? That, that's that word right there, fluid. They're very movy. So convection is that cycle. It's going to make a cycling movement of air and water or other liquids. So the hot, right, gets less dense and goes up. And then that allows for the colder, more dense to come down and it makes those cycles. So this boiling water, so yes, it is touching, the pan is touching is conduction, but the actual water is not all touching the pan. But the hotter water goes up and the colder molecules go down and it makes that cycle until it's all heated up. A hot air balloon blows hot air up, which makes it rise because it's less dense, and cold air comes down to get heated back up. Convection ovens use air to cycle around the food to heat it more evenly and quicker. So it's cycling air. So we did that experiment in class where we popped the different types of popcorn, right? This has air blowing up. And once they're less dense, they come out. So hair dryers, right? You're blowing air. It's sucking the cold air in the back, blowing it out the front and making that cycle. And if you're trying to heat up your house with a fireplace or a heater or something like that, so the hot comes out and the hot air is going to expand and rise and it allows the cold air to swoop in down by the fireplace and warm up and then it keeps that cycle to warm up that whole entire room. So convection is cycles. And our last type of heat transfer is radiation and these are the heat waves. So you don't have to touch it to feel it, and it does not involve water or gas. So it's those magnetic waves. We can just feel that heat source. So at restaurants, they'll put your food under a heat lamp. So it's just giving off those waves to keep your food warm. The sun is the ultimate source of radiation here. So anytime we're talking about sun, radiation. So when I stand to the side of a fire and I'm pretty close to it but not touching it, I can feel that heat radiating off of it. Your, your microwave uses electromagnetic waves. If you've ever stood on a stage, they have those really bright lights. They make you hot, they radiate that heat down onto you. And also every person is a great example of radiation. So my body is hot and it wants to get rid of that heat and it's constantly giving off heat. So if I stand next to somebody, like and we're this kind of the same temperature in class, I'm not really going to notice because we're already, you know, balanced. 
But like, I've stood by people like, and I'm cold and they're really hot. Like they've been working out or something and you can almost feel like that heat radiating off of them. Sometimes like in the summer or like once it warms up, kids will come in from like recess and I can like feel that heat coming off of them almost it's like, whew, like they brought it in with them. So our bodies radiate that to try and keep our bodies at a regulated temperature. So all of those are examples of radiation. So as our heat is being transferred, we also have conductors, which sounds very similar to conduction. But remember, conduction is the actual act of it. Conduction. That's, you're doing that thing. You're touching it, okay? A conductor is the material that it's made of and it has to touch. So yes, it does touch. It's conducting that heat and it's usually through a touch, but a conductor is the material it's made of. Conduction is the actual action, right? Conduction, act, action, you have to actually do it. So a conductor, a thermal conductor is something that is going to allow the heat to transfer through. It has a high thermal conductivity. It is transferring that heat as like a train conductor, right? Like they're the driver of that train. So these are driving those molecules and that heat is going through them. So any types of metals, copper, aluminum, gold, any metals are going to be great, usually conductors. And that is because those molecules are so tightly packed. So conductors are usually very solid and hard materials, like they don't have a lot of pores in them, they're just really packed in there. And right, if that heat starts up here, it's easy for it to go right through these because these are all touching and packed together. Where insulators have a very low thermal conductivity, they are not going very fast. And those molecules are going to be more spread out. These are going to be softer materials, plastics, foams, wood, air, right? All these have lots of air in them because they are spread out. So if I have something hot up here trying to transfer its heat to something over here, it's being blocked by an insulator, that energy has a hard time jumping across these molecules because they're not touching. They have so much air in between them that's really spreading them out. So insulators are fluffy and light and have lots of air, okay? And they don't have to be fluffy. Wood is an insulator. And I guess it's not fluffy, right? But like blanket materials are fluffy, but wood is actually an insulator, right? If I'm stirring a hot, something hot, I would want to use plastic or wood, not something metal so it doesn't conduct through the handle and burn my hand. So conductors are packed together and transfer the heat quickly. Insulators are spread out materials that slow down and stop the spread of that heat. So your little reward is to email me, so in Canvas or Nicole.Richards at BESD.net. I think most of you have my email. If you don't, just come tell me and I'll, that's fine too. So you need to tell me one thing, one insulator that you think you want to buy for your elf house to keep your elf the warmest. So what is an insulator you want to buy? Email me that and I will add 300 points to your account about that. So don't tell your friends what to do because they need to watch the video too. So don't give them free points. So you watch this video and you know what conduction, convection, radiation are conductors and insulators and you're going to email me a type of insulator you want to use in your elf house, I'll give you 300 points.